They said it was just a comet, a cold traveler from the stars, another harmless wanderer passing through the solar system on its lonely journey. But Three-Eye Atlas wasn't harmless, and it wasn't what they expected, because when it got too close, something shifted. The data stopped flowing, images vanished, access was denied, locked behind red warning screens and embargo notices stretching decades into the future. Some files were hidden until 2026, others until 2099. Why? Because Three-Eye Atlas isn't behaving like a comet. It's releasing 40 kilograms of water every second. It's carrying hydrogen cyanide, toxic to humans, yet essential in the chemistry of life. Its metals don't match. Its ratios don't match. Its activity doesn't match. Even the dust it sheds is wrong. So the question now isn't where it came from. The question is why they won't let us see what it left behind. What if they locked the files because Three-Eye Atlas isn't natural? What if it's something else entirely? They saw it coming. Three-Eye Atlas had been detected months before its closest approach, a speck of motion against the infinite stillness of space. At first, it was just a curiosity, another object from outside our solar system, the third to be precise. But almost immediately, something felt off. It wasn't just where it came from, it was what it did. Unlike Oumuamua, which passed silently, and Borisov, which behaved mostly like a textbook comet, Three-Eye Atlas began stacking anomalies from the start. Scientists monitored its trajectory, eager to collect data as it made a rare near-pass by Mars. Probes like the SA's ExoMars were perfectly positioned. It was the opportunity of a decade, maybe more. And then the silence began. The flyby happened. Instruments were aimed. Cameras captured it. Sensors registered light. Heat. Spectra. We were told it was being observed. But what came back never came out. Data went dark. Files became locked. On the official websites of the European Space Agency, where imagery and sensor readings are usually published openly, something strange appeared. Listings of files clearly labeled 3i Atlas flyby material had release dates far in the future. One said April 3, 2026. Another, April 3, 2099. Not a mistake, not a glitch, an embargo. Users attempting to download these public files were met with red icons and a cold message. You don't have permission to download this data. And yet the object was gone, already hurtling deeper into the inner solar system. The flyby had passed. The data had been gathered. So why keep it hidden? Why block the world from knowing what this object left behind? What could possibly warrant a 74-year lock on images and readings from a simple comet? Unless it isn't simple at all. The data we do have, from other observatories not yet gagged by embargo, paints a very different picture of Three-Eye Atlas. This object is expelling massive amounts of water vapor, 40 kilograms every second, enough to drain an Olympic swimming pool in less than a day. That level of activity is extreme even for a comet closer to the Sun. But Three-Eye Atlas began doing this far beyond the orbit of Mars, far too early for normal thermal activation. And it wasn't just water, Hydrogen cyanide was detected, a compound lethal to humans, but known in astrobiology as a key prebiotic molecule, the kind that can, under the right conditions, help give rise to life. Then came the metals. Spectral readings indicated an unusual ratio of nickel to iron, higher than anything seen in our solar system. The material in its coma didn't match any known comet. The dust patterns didn't behave like normal sublimation tails. The object's brightness didn't follow the thermal curve of a typical icy body heating near the sun. Every signal pointed to something strange, something alien, not necessarily in the science fiction sense, but in the literal one, foreign, unfamiliar, not of this world. Because it's possible that if it's a uh, alien probe uh, that in fact it would release uh, some mini probes that will visit the planet yeah so uh during the month of november uh then on october 29th it will come closest to the sun then that's when it will be heated and then on december 19th just a week before christmas uh it will uh, be closest to earth that means it's not a comet that means it's heading toward Earth. Yeah, definitely, because so far, you know, I analyzed the last week all the 4,000 data points from 227 observatories on Earth. And when scientists find something they can't explain, 
they often do one of two things. They speculate or they suppress. With Three Eye Atlas, speculation was cut short, suppression won, locked files, restricted data, embargoes stretching decades into the future, and a growing sense that this was no longer just about science, it was about control. Because the moment something refuses to fit the known categories, when it releases toxic compounds, mimics comet-like behavior, but contradicts the chemistry of comets, it forces uncomfortable questions. What is Three Eye Atlas? Where did it really come from? And more importantly, what did they see during the Mars flyby that made them lock the files? What made them decide we shouldn't know? At first glance, Three Eye Atlas behaves like a comet. It has a tail, it outgasses, it brightens as it approaches the sun. But sometimes, a lie hides best when it wears a little truth. Because when we looked closer, when the data leaked past the walls, the illusion cracked. Three Eye Atlas is not chemically normal, not remotely. Standard comets in our solar system follow familiar rules. Their compositions reflect the environments where they were born, cold, dusty places in the outer solar nursery. But Three Eye Atlas came from somewhere older, stranger, and its body carries the scars of that history. Let's start with the water. 40 kilograms per second. Let that sink in. Every second, this object sheds enough vapor to fill a large bathtub. In under 20 hours, it could fill an Olympic swimming pool. That kind of activity isn't just unusual, it's unprecedented for something still so far from the sun. Traditional comets only reach that level of sublimation after they've entered the inner solar system. Three Eye Atlas started earlier. And then there's the hydrogen cyanide. Yes, cyanide. A substance deadly to humans in small doses. But in the grand laboratory of the cosmos, hydrogen cyanide is more than a poison. It's a building block, an ingredient found in the chemical recipes that may have led to life. Why was Three Eye Atlas carrying it? It didn't stop there. The ratio of nickel to iron detected in its emissions was wrong. Not just unusual, completely out of range for any known comet in the solar system. Here, metallic bodies tend to follow a balance forged during the formation of our local planets and moons. But Three Eye Atlas was made in a different crucible. Scientists believe it may have originated in what's called the thick disk of the Milky Way, a distant, older region of our galaxy filled with ancient stars and chaotic energies. If true, this would explain a lot. Ice formed in those conditions would be more volatile, more reactive and chemically unique. The dust would be older, the metals more exotic. Which means Three Eye Atlas isn't just a visitor, it's a messenger, a time capsule from a forgotten corner of the galaxy, carrying whispers from the universe's early days. And in that sense, it's confessions, it's strange chemistry, it's outgassing, it's radioactive leaks, might be its language, a story told in molecules. So why silence it? Why embargo the data? Why hide the one opportunity humanity has to study something so rare, so fragile, so alien? Maybe because the truth is too complicated. Maybe because it threatens the clean, orderly model of the cosmos we've sold to generations. Or maybe, just maybe, because Three Eye Atlas reveals that we are not prepared for what's out there. And there's something else. A comet with this level of chemical activity, with this mixture of volatile compounds, isn't just curious, it's unstable. Imagine an object shedding both water and toxic gases at extreme rates while tumbling unpredictably through the solar system. It's a chemical reactor flying through space, and we still don't know what's inside. Some speculate that the outgassing patterns could be artificial, that the emissions are not random, that they show structure, direction, control. Is it far-fetched? Of course. But so is a comet locked behind classified files. So is an object spewing deadly gas while being filmed only to have that footage buried for 74 years. So is silence. And silence, when truth is expected, is itself a confession. If you've followed the mystery this far, you're already part of a rare kind of audience, the kind that questions, digs, and sees beyond the headlines. And if you want to support this kind of independent investigation, the kind that doesn't wait for permission, consider becoming a member of the Cosmic Unknown. Your membership keeps this channel alive. It lets us go deeper, farther, and faster into stories they won't tell, into truths they'd rather you ignore. The universe is not quiet, and we're not done listening. The files are there, the sensors recorded, the images exist, but we will not see them, 
Not any time soon. Three I Atlas passed. Instruments watched. Spectra were logged. Yet when you visit the European Space Agency's archives, you find file listings labeled Mars flyby, spectral scan, chemical composition, all bearing a red padlock icon and a notice. You don't have permission to download this data. Some say the release is scheduled for April 3rd, 2026. Others, for April 3rd, 2026. 74 years of silence. To call this a bureaucratic delay is to miss the point. This is not a missing file. This is not corruption. This is concealment. Why? Because whatever they captured during that close pass, they believe must remain hidden. Think through the implications. If all we know of 3i Atlas is what leaked out, its bursts of water, its toxic compounds, its metal ratios, then the official record should confirm, deny, or refine those leaks. Instead, they've locked validation behind decades. A comet doesn't get that level of secrecy. A natural object, even one of cosmic origin, is typically published, scrutinized, debated. You release the data. You invite peer review. You stake your reputation on what you discovered. But this, this is different. What if during the flyby, 3i Atlas did something unexpected? What if it responded? What if it shifted, or realigned, or revealed patterns that betray intelligence? What if its emissions had structure, order, something that no naturally formed coma should present? If that happened, the implications would break open every standard model we cling to, of cosmic dust, of natural evolution, of life as a rare accident. They would shatter the assumption that Earth is isolated, that we are alone. So bury the data, lock it, delay it. Let time bury interest. Let those who demand accountability die off. Embargo is the polite word. Censorship is the honest one. Agencies like NASA have been accused before of selective data release. Whistleblowers point to black vaults, to files hidden away, not because they're classified, but because they're anomalous. And now the ESA seems to be complicit, not by overt declaration, but by silence and redaction. ESA itself allows embargoed releases of certain information in certain cases. Agencia Espacial Europea. But can an agency whose mission is exploration and knowledge justify this extreme delay? Can they claim that 2099 is just a placeholder when everything about 3i Atlas screams urgency? A placeholder meant to outlive most of its interlocutors. A release date so distant that most viewers today will be gone. Most members of the public will have forgotten. Most scientists will have moved on. And the only ones left asking will be the few who never stopped looking. But those few deserve the truth. The black boxes of aviation are retrieved. The hidden files of police misconduct are eventually exposed. But here we are, stuck waiting. Until then, we have fragments. We have leaks. We have theory. We build from the shadows. We piece together what we can. The water emission rates the gas signatures, the anomalous metal traces. We argue, we challenge, we suspect, because the universe does not obey delay. Silence is its own message. The moment 3i Atlas passed Mars, we had a chance, a window into something cosmic, something strange. But that window was shuttered, locked until 2099. And what if, when that day comes, the world has changed so radically that the data will no longer seem as shocking what if by then we've encountered something else, and the relevance is muted? Or what if those files are quietly altered, or never released at all? This is not just about one object. It's about our right to know what comes from beyond. It's about whether we, as a civilization, will allow cosmic secrets to be buried behind arbitrary dates. We can't wait. We must keep pushing. We must hold them accountable. We must record, question, broadcast. Because when data is locked, knowledge is blocked. And when knowledge is blocked, the gap between public and hidden becomes the frontier. In that frontier, the real story lives. The story of 3i Atlas is not over. It will outlast embargoes, redactions, and locked files. Our task is to keep it alive until someone, someday, unlocks it. Until then, we watch the skies. We follow the anomalies. We remember that silence, when it persists, is not empty. It is intentional. They told us it was just a rock, just ice and dust from a distant corner of the galaxy. 
But when Three-Eye Atlas arrived, it spoke in water, in poison, in silence. And then they locked the files. That silence isn't random. It's structured, controlled, like a wall built not just to delay understanding, but to prevent it altogether. This object, this anomaly, might never return. It's a once in a civilization encounter, a message in motion carrying secrets from the thick disk of the galaxy, where time flows differently and chemistry defies expectations. And yet, the most human part of this story is not Three-Eye Atlas itself, it's what we did when it arrived. We turned our eyes, we raised our instruments, we asked questions, and when the answers were hidden, we kept asking anyway. That's why we're here. If you believe stories like this need to be told, if you believe the search for truth shouldn't be locked behind paywalls, governments, or decades of silence, then help us stay independent, like this video. Subscribe to the channel, share it with someone who still looks up at the night sky and wonders, because the cosmos doesn't hide, but sometimes people do, and it's up to us to keep the light on.